Hey friends, welcome to the Swing My Heart podcast with your host, Kristen, Nicole, and Hannah. Come join our porch swing conversations filled with lots of faith, hope, and heart. Hey Postables, we are back with another episode and today we will be recapping Higher Ground. Hannah and Kristen, they couldn't make it today, but we have a very special guest from Deliver Me, a podcast. Casey, welcome to the podcast, Casey. Hi, Nicole. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited. Yes, we're excited to have you for this wonderful movie in the SSD canon. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad that you asked me to recap Higher Ground with you because we all know well, if you are a postable, you all know how much I love this movie. But yes. for those of you who are new, you're in for a wild ride. <laughs> yes. I knew yes. it's one of your favorites. Or it I know is. it's one of your favorites. So yes. that's exactly yes. why I asked you. <laughs> and just in general, it's fun to invite fellow postables onto the podcast. Yeah, yeah. It's always fun connecting and just chatting about your favorite movies with like yeah. some of your favorite people. And like Nicole, you are one of my favorite people to chat Aww. with. I mean, when the vows, right before the vows um release, Nicole was my go-to girl for like the scoop. Yeah. This girl knows how to find the scoop on movies now, okay? <laughs> That was a lot of fun. Oh, that was so much fun. I mean, all the screenshots of what could or could not be and <laughs> the zooming up, trying to see if we could figure out what yes. you know Kristen was wearing for the for Shane's dress. I mean, like, oh, so fun. <laughs> I know. And I think that one um cameo, I think I sent it for was it your birthday or was it for Cammy's? I can't remember. Oh, that's right. Well, okay. You, you did, you sent, I did send you one. Yes. Yes. You sent, um, Cammy's birthday fell during the very last day of shooting. And so you were able to send um, a little cameo from Kristen. And then for my birthday earlier last May, you sent me a cameo from Eric Eric. and I was just so touched. (laughs) Eric say Eric maybe is saying happy birthday to me. <laughs> Thanks, Nicole. You're Again. welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. That was I loved doing that for a friend and fellow postable. You're so sweet. <laughs> yes, they always do great cameos. Mm-hmm. They do. Uh, do we want to get right into it with the movie? Recap? Oh yeah, for sure. Let's go. It premiered on February nineteenth, two thousand seventeen. It guest stars Keb Mo as Gabe, Karen Holness as Hattie, BJ Harrison as Violet, Annabelle Kershaw as Kate, and returning in their roles as Papa O'Toole, Gregory Harrison, Zach Santiago as Ramon Rodriguez, and Mark Valley as Steve Merrick. You know, really quick before I read the synopsis. <laughs> with Steve um you know how there's we don't talk about Bruno I really want the song from Encanto um if if you don't have if you don't if you're not a Disney fan or you don't have kids you probably are like wait what but um I have two children who are obsessed with Encanto and so just look it up but we don't talk about Bruno it's a very famous song and I just want to make a parody that says we don't talk about Steve (laughs) we don't talk about steve no 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 i actually have not seen that movie but i know what song you're talking about (laughs) okay yeah i should make what you know what we should make make a real we yes yes for rama drama (laughs) yes and a verse for holly and a verse for steve anyways yes just had to throw that out there when you said steve's name because yes makes it made me giggle but yeah although mark valley does a phenomenal job playing yes Steve. he does he does all righty um so the synopsis for higher ground is featuring inspirational music by grammy winner keb mo sign seal delivered higher ground begins in the wake of hurricane katrina where local new orleans handyman and blues singer songwriter gabriel colt was left homeless and brokenhearted 
The storm came right before he had a chance to express his love for club owner Hattie. As he is forced to evacuate and relocate, Gabe wrote a heartfelt letter to Hattie. The Post will face unusual challenges in solving the postal mystery in post-Katrina New Orleans. Oliver grapples with his unexpressed feelings for Shane, while Norman and Rita's relationship continues to get stronger. I love that synopsis for this movie. Oh, I know. So uh, in depth. No, it's it, there's so many things, so many pieces to this movie. I mean, yeah. there, I how are we going to cover oh, it all in an hour? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. This is okay. I've said this many times before on this podcast. Every movie, every episode, it's amazing, or they're amazing, but. Higher ground in particular just is incredible. Mm -hmm. All yeah. around storyline, the acting, cinematography, mm -hmm. the directing, everything pulls it's on wonderful. those heartstrings. Yeah. Yes, it gives you all the feels. All the feels. So before we get into the letter story, on a scale of one to ten, what would you rate Higher Ground? Oh my. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> okay. See, that's a really hard question, especially is, when you've seen yeah. all of them. Mm -hmm. I would rate higher ground at like a 9.9. .9. Yeah, me too. It's, it's one of, uh, Hmm. I, I guess it really know. depends on the day, like what my favorite movie is. But if I really had to sit back and look at all of the movies, I think this one had everything. The letter story was compelling. Mm -hmm. The relationship growth between Norman and Rita, the tug and the pull away and all of that with Shane and um, Oliver. Um, and then also Hurricane Katrina, that story is so close like it's very near and dear to my heart because I live on the Gulf Coast and I experienced the bands of Hurricane Katrina um, not as greatly as like the people in New Orleans but me on the panhandle of Pensacola we definitely got those after effects and mm -hmm. um, like schools were canceled here like from New Orleans all the way down to you know 30A in that area like we were getting those effects so I think because it has a personal connection to me like I remember that time I remember those people from New Orleans coming over to our area trying to you know find shelter and all of that I, I think that's why I, I want to say this is probably my second favorite one because my first favorite one is the last one <laughs> but yeah this one's pretty high yeah I can totally understand why this mm -hmm. one is so high on your list of favorites of course I don't have any family that lives in New Orleans or that were affected by Hurricane Katrina but one of my teachers from middle school I believe it was my French teacher she had family that lived mm -hmm. in New Orleans or right around there so they were affected and it made me sad to hear that but mm -hmm. luckily they were okay and they survived so that's mm -hmm. good Yes. Yes. Do we want to get into the letter story now with Gabe and Hattie? Yes. Let's get into that letter story. Yes. So the first scene, we see a shot of New Orleans and a voiceover, you know, talking about Hurricane Katrina. And then we see a shelter full of people mm -hmm. and Gabe is playing his guitar and then a woman comes up. Her name is Violet. He fixed a railing in the choir loft of a local church. The line that really got me in this scene was when Violet asked, you lose anybody? And Gabe said, I didn't have anybody to lose. Mm. That really broke my heart. Yeah, that one went, that line was so sad, but it was also very interesting because I was like, you had no family, but where is the story going? You have to, you're writing to somebody, you yeah. know? Yeah, you're writing to somebody. 
And speaking of writing to somebody, we see Gabe get on the bus mm-hmm. and he's writing Hattie. I have what he wrote down or I have what he wrote in the letter or the first part of what he wrote in the letter written down. He says, dear Hattie, this is Gabe. I told you I don't talk about you and I sure don't write much. And I want you to know that I'm okay and I hope you are too. They put me on a bus to somewhere and I don't know where I'm going to end up, but I know what's going to keep me going. My music and remembering you. Oh, so sweet. And yes. that line or that that scene really was, I had a lot of intrigue. A I lot of intrigue. Um, just because like hmm who is who is this Hattie Hattie. who is Hattie (laughs) yeah then we start hearing the classic intro to sign sealed delivered oh gotta love it I was jamming when I when I was watching that earlier I was like yeah (laughs) I do every time I watch the movies yes I jam out (laughs) the next scene is of the postables they are in Eleanor's office and they're cleaning out her things because we know from Lost Without You that she has passed away Mm -hmm. they go over Gabe's letter he used a mile high for his return address because Denver is known as the mile high city Mm -hmm. which I thought was very clever yeah yeah (laughs) The postmark was September 5th, 2005. Yeah. So right after Katrina. Yes. Um, so were you in junior high during Katrina? I was in, so let's see. I think I was in seventh grade. No, maybe sixth grade. I think I was okay. in sixth grade. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. No, 2005. You're youngin'. Yeah. <laughs> I was, yeah. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Okay. Yeah. 2005. I remember hearing that. I mean, obviously we kind of knew, but, um, and I think, I believe they had the, the dates in the opening scene where it said like the dates of 2005. And I remember going like, huh. Yeah. Mm, Interesting. Interesting timing here. (laughs) Yeah. Actually, now that I think of it, I was in sixth grade. That was like right after I started sixth grade. I don't know why I remember it because of this but high school musical was out oh <laughs> in sixth grade so hey I was that came out in 2006. you know ninth and tenth grade so it's fine <laughs> that came out in 2006 so yeah <laughs> my mind gets jumbled sometimes yeah I love some of the next few lines after one of the flashback scenes of mm-hmm. Gabe and Hattie I think it's the first one when Oliver says a carpenter who's a musician and then Rita says, or a musician who's a carpenter. And then Shane says, it's not about what you do for a living. It's about the living you do. Yeah, that's very profound. Yeah. It's very profound. I, I remember that line popping out at me this past time. And I was like, wow, that's, we're going deep. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're getting deep. Although that's great advice. Mm-hmm. Great, a great quote from this movie. Yeah. I love the scene of Gabe meeting Hattie. That was really cute when he walks in and he asks, you know, may I please have a ginger ale? And she's like, may I please have have a ginger ginger ale? ale. (laughs) Or yes, you may please have a ginger ale. Are you hungry? Like Sunday after church. Yes. I mean, who isn't hungry on a Sunday after church? Exactly. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) But, you know, it's interesting that Hattie was that intuitive to know that he really just needed a push Mm -hmm. to get him out of his comfort zone. And, um, you know, she must have really, she must have, she must have been able to really sense the fact that he needed something, Mm -hmm. some kind of encouragement, you know, a little, a little bit of sass, a little, you know, just lighten him up and stuff. Yeah. Um, because we find out later that, you know, he, um, Gabe is very downtrodden. I mean, mm-hmm. his backstory is just so sad. I know. And we'll get to that in just a little bit. Yeah. Gabe playing at Hattie's for the first time. I love the song that he's playing. She just mm-hmm. wants to dance. 
and then yes. dancing right <laughs> along and she puts the flower in her hair yeah that was cute mm-hmm. Shane and Oliver talking about Gabe falling in love the line from the letter says I'd always had the music in me but I'd forgotten what it was for until you and then I wrote Oliver thinks Gabe is in love Shane doesn't think so and I also wrote that this was kind of like reverse thoughts Mm -hmm. because in the pilot Shane you know knew that Charlie was falling in love but Mm -hmm. Oliver didn't agree with that yes and that happened again in something good yes something good that too it's I found that interesting I found that an interesting choice character choice for like for Martha to kind of like flip it because you would think Shane would be the one going oh they're in love but I don't know she's rubbing off on Oliver Uh or maybe Oliver is kind of like (laughs) seeing himself in this letter (laughs) just saying (laughs) maybe some hidden feelings there Mr. O'Toole (laughs) yes exactly there's nothing listed about Hattie's in the phone books Mm -hmm. because after Hurricane Katrina it was gone it was wiped out which is really sad that is really sad I mean the devastation of Katrina was just I mean it affected people for years after yeah. years. I mean, I remember when they said the levees broke. So, you know, what I thought was interesting too with this is that um, the geographical choice, obviously we have Denver, but they specifically call out that Denver is a mile high. And then we all know that New Orleans is below sea level. And so you also have that playing in this just as the very drastic differences in the geographical locations and with Hattie's being like under like below sea level I mean I'm sure the devastation was catastrophic um just with the flooding alone and um yeah I mean that's just it it's so much especially because because there was so much devastation and like people were feeling the after effects of that for like for years after Mm-hmm. yeah I mean we've gotten some bad hurricanes here and some bad flooding but never on that level well at least for a while I mean we had Hurricane Hugo which I wasn't born yet but that was in 1989 which basically destroyed Char- the uh, which basically destroyed the Charleston area but oh wow yeah. we haven't had that bad of a hurricane since since then. oh wow Her name is Amelia Gray Hatfield, but she goes by Hattie, Mm -hmm. which I love. That's a great name, Amelia Gray Hatfield. Yeah, I like that name. (laughs) Yeah, we get the scene with the postables at the mailbox grill. Shane is telling Oliver if the search that's running now doesn't work, then she'll move on to state and federal records. (laughs) I love Oliver's comment, you know, as he's looking at her, he's just like, remarkable he is so fascinated with with Shane you know he does never he he does not want to admit it at this point of their relationship but just some of the things that he'll stop and say like when he found out that she was on the debate team that was another yeah he's like astonishing yeah (laughs) this one remarkable How many adjectives can Oliver O'Toole use? I know, I know. She just leaves them so dumbfounded, you know? (laughs) Yeah, I love it though. It's really Mm -hmm. cute. I also love Shane's line a few seconds after that when Oliver pulls out the letter Mm -hmm. to read, you know, in the mailbox grill and she says, wow, Oliver O'Toole breaking protocol. What is that all about? What? And he's like, I'm not sure. (laughs) Well, I don't know, Mr. O'Toole. I think you do know. I th- yeah you in love <laughs> is somebody like just you know quietly pushing you to kind of just break the rules I mean if you break the rules about bringing a letter you can maybe yeah. like bend the rules about dating yes. your coworker. yeah or your employee <laughs> yes. colleague colleague yeah I love when Ramon showed up. That was awesome. Yes. Oh, gotta love Ramon. Yes. 
and this isn't related to the letter story, but he has bought the mailbox grill. So he's now the owner. Mm -hmm. And then they talk a little bit more about, you know, dishes that could be at the mailbox grill or, you know, food that could be served. And I love Norman's reaction. He's like, why, why, why? <laughs> like, why did you, uh, yes. you gotta love uh, Jeff and Zach's portrayal of Norman and um, Ramon. Ramon. Yes. Just because their, their facial expressions, especially Jeff. I mean, Jeff just kills it. Kills Every time. It. Every time I am here for more. Oh my goodness scenes i if if there is another movie i would just like to request that there be a, a really just golden comedic scene with zach and jeff because those yes. two are golden and if not in a movie then please at rama drama <laughs> yes please at rama drama i'm so excited that they'll both be there of course yes. all the they other are. wonderful postables yes he knows a lot about music, so he joins in on the conversation of the letter. I also love how he starts eating Norman's chocolate cake. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> that was yeah, he, funny. He's just, and he's just mindlessly just sitting there dick, dipping he's his like, fork and just like, and Norman's all, he's, I mean, does not face him. No. <laughs> Surprisingly. And I think I'm jumping ahead just a little bit, but when Ramon is saying, you know, what did she teach him? What did she teach him? (laughs) We get another flashback scene of Gabe and Hattie at the restaurant. So this Mm -hmm. is, you know, simultaneously while the postables are at the mailbox grill. Gabe is playing his song, One Friend. I love that song. That's a really It's a really song. sweet song, yeah. Yeah. In the letter, he talks about how he could have fixed the gate at the bar in one try, but he didn't want to leave. Mm-hmm. And he pretended that he couldn't find the right parts to the hinge. <laughs> oh, he... That was cute. He, yeah he knew what he was we all know we all know nothing gets past Hattie (laughs) yes nothing as we see in the little montage (laughs) he finds the right hinges as Mm -hmm. he's singing one of his other songs tell everybody I know which I actually really love that song I have that song on my iTunes Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and I like how he was like "Uh (laughs) uh-oh yeah uh uh-oh yeah that was cute yeah the next little scene between them or the conversation between them is when Gabe is getting ready to leave and they're talking about weathering the storm together which I thought was a nice moment Mm -hmm. although Gabe doesn't make it back yeah but yeah that that was very sad I mean yeah yeah I actually have that part of the letter when he tells her how he tried Mm. to get back he says the next day they made us evacuate and then the levees broke and Hattie I tried everything I could to get back to you but I couldn't even get close I lost my home lost my toolbox I lost everything but my guitar but my only regret is waiting too long to tell you how I feel I kept thinking I had tomorrow Somebody on this bus thinks it's going to Denver. And if that's true, then you'll know how to find me if you want to. Because I'm going to do what you taught me to do. I'm going to find my higher ground and I'll be there every Sunday morning waiting for the rest of my life. And I promise if there's another bus to Denver and you get on it and find me, I'll never lose you again. Always, Gabe. Oh, this part always makes me cry yeah it just it's so oh it's so heartbreaking just because just knowing that I mean the separation that these two are gonna have I mean that's so devastating and also knowing that he Gabe never shot his shot Mm -hmm. you know he was gonna tell her how he felt and like he did not shoot his Mm -hmm. shot and he lost that opportunity yeah and so always tell people you love them, folks. If that's one takeaway. 
Yeah, I was about to say that. That's a good lesson. Hattie came up as missing and presumed dead. Oh, I know that one was. I was not I, expecting I, that. I mm, I thought well, for sure that they were going to say, oh, yeah, she's probably like, you know, <laughs> somewhere in the Louisiana area. And but no, I mean, <sighs> presumed dead. I mean, mm. yeah it's very sad but you have to also kind of wonder too like in the back of your mind you know this is hallmark so maybe she is somehow alive but yeah would that be a a thing (laughs) yeah yeah exactly i definitely was not expecting that you know i thought Mm -hmm. that it would be something else you know preventing them from being together Mm mm-hmm yeah like you know i was also kind of thinking like if she was alive maybe she fell in love with someone else yeah maybe they got married and maybe they had a family like you know I don't know you never know yeah the postable's talking to Ramon about Gabe and Hattie so this is after they found out that Hattie is presumed dead mm. and Oliver is talking about you know wondering if Gabe has given up and Ramon says True love never gives up. Then he goes on to say, at times like this, all I can do is pray and of course eat my mother's famous pathole. Yes. <laughs> Priority male pathole. Yes. I'll leave it to Ramon. Um, to make- oh. Was is it lemons out of or leave it soup? leave it to Ramon to take lemons and make soup? <laughs> yes, that's what it is. I was like, I know there's soup in there somewhere. Have you ever tried pozole? I haven't. I've not. I've not. Not to my knowledge. I don't think I have either. I don't think I've even heard of it until I watched this movie. Yeah, I don't know that I've heard of it. Well, I mean, no, I don't think I had heard of it. Um, I think I've had things similar to it because I did look it up and I was like, oh, yeah, you know, Filipinos have similar dishes. So, yeah. Yeah. I also love Norman's line in this scene. Mm -hmm. He says... Ramon's got a point. You don't just stop loving somebody, especially if you've been lonely your whole life. And then one day you walk in and you meet somebody who makes you laugh Mm -hmm. and sees all the good things about you, makes you feel special. Oh, yeah. That was really sweet. So sweet. Read his line about, you know, finding Gabe and Hattie. Mm -hmm. And she says, we're the postables. We have wide powers of postal discretion that we haven't even used yet. It's true. I mean, you gotta love Rita's enthusiasm and her positivity yes. with these yes. things. She's always like the cheerleader, like, yeah, we got we got we got this, we guys. This. We got yeah. this. <laughs> Oliver, Rita, and Norman, they still haven't been successful in their search for Gabe. Mm-hmm. And Oliver suggests that they should try all the churches in Denver. Mm-hmm. He says, I made a promise to myself. I can't give up on this. And I wrote in my notes, you made a promise to Shane too. Yes. Yes. Well, he, he hesitates, doesn't he? He's like, I made a promise to myself. Yes, he does. Yeah. He hesitates. You're like, and the other thing too, that's a little heartbreaking is you can tell that Rita and Norman know, mm-hmm. they know that he, they know why he's so desperate to find Uh Hattie and just like at least stick to his word because Shane's not there and you can see like they have this like non-verbal exchange at least Norman and Rita do when he says I made a promise to myself like I can't give up on this yeah yeah and it's like it was almost like um him saying too like I can't give up on Shane yeah I didn't it's think gone. about that but that's yeah because it's like Hattie's away Shane is also away okay. I mean he's already he was already you know jilted by Holly yeah and it's almost like PTSD for this poor man mm-hmm. so um yeah <sighs> Ramon suggests that musicians are magnets for other musicians and that they should have a blues night at the mailbox grill to try mm-hmm. to find Gabe. Kind of like lure him in. Lure him in, yeah. 
Oliver, Rita, and Norman, they go to the first Blues night at the Mailbox Grill, and mm-hmm. Ramon introduces them to Denver legend Big Joe Hopkins. Yes. <laughs> He did a great job playing the saxophone, mm-hmm. I think, is what the instrument was. Yeah, they all really did. I was, yeah, they all I was did kind of like, where are these blues clubs? I mean, I don't I know. Kind of want to hang out at the mailbox grill on a Friday night, have a date with my husband and like, you know, just yeah, bop, bop yeah. around, you know? Yeah. <laughs> if you need me, I'll be in the mailbox grill. Yeah. <laughs> love it. Love it. The name Gabe doesn't ring a bell with him, so he suggests that they speak to a fellow blues Mm -hmm. musician, Ephraim Beals, who plays at the E-flat lounge. So they go to the E-flat lounge and they meet Ephraim Beals. He says that the musicians, they don't normally use their real names. You know, they have nicknames Mm -hmm. that they go by. Ephraim gives them one of his CDs. And they see that one of the songs is called Walk a Mile in My Blues. And they finally put the pieces together. Walk a Mile in My Blues. My blues. The 52 Man. Yes. 5,280 feet. One mile, folks. <laughs> yes. That was very, that was a very good scene. Mm-hmm. I loved seeing Indeed. them, you know, put the pieces together. Yes. And I love the next scene when they're running back to the yes. yellow. And I know, I think it was Crystal who had said like every like the um the director always wants that always tries to put the reader on the oh, reader yeah. in there. And so she's like <laughs> running oh. into the DLO and they're like yeah. shuffling through all the letters and then yes. looking and they find it and it's, you know. Yeah. Babe. A mile also, high. Yeah. I also love how throughout some of the movies or in some of the movies, we see them, you know, going around Denver like early in the morning, like at 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. Yeah. Yeah. I you were they wore the same outfits. Yeah. Like, did they spend the night? Did they have like a little like postal slumber party in the DLO? Like, did Oliver just like hang back at his desk and then, (laughs) or are there secret cots? Or did a secret cot, like, you know, um, one of those, um, what is it? You know, those, the beds that you can roll up into a box because they're like foam and Um, stuff and you just have to like air mattress span. No, 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 no. Like, um, um, they're kind of like, the um foam foam mattresses oh gosh I don't know the name of it It, it, they have like I think there's one that's like um I'd have to look at Casper Casper mattress or like there's another one um anyways yeah they're they're beds and boxes like maybe maybe the Casper company was shipping to people and it got routed to the DLO but you Maybe, can't yeah. figure out who it belongs to so yeah. they got these mattresses yeah which is kind of funny though companies. like did they spend the night in the DLO that is yeah. the question of this movie <laughs> yeah I think the first time we see this kind of thing is in from Paris with Love when Oliver is at Shane's house at two in the morning installing the porch <laughs> Yeah, these possibles like to stay up late. Like, okay. I well, love it though. It's yeah. Fun. Yeah. Oliver, Rita, and Norman, they find Gabe and they have a conversation with him. I also loved the scene. This was a great scene between all of them. Yeah, it really was. I, you, it's interesting seeing Gabe now you know like he Mm -hmm. he's just still singing his heart out he's Mm -hmm. um he's still there faithfully every Sunday yeah and the heartbreaking thing is when Oliver promises to continue to look for Hattie yeah you know I have the line he says the truth is every letter that comes through our office is a sacred trust and we will not rest until." We have used every means at our disposal 
to try to deliver it to its intended recipient, mm -hmm. or we've determined the whereabouts of that recipient. Can't promise anything. Then again, we are a mile high, so anything's possible. Yes. You can tell Norman and Rita were really surprised yeah. when Oliver agrees to continue to look for Hattie. Yeah. Because like to them, they're like, we've been looking for Hattie forever and we cannot yeah. find her. And the only thing that's come up is the fact that she might not right be alive. So, yeah. yeah. This is also the same time that we hear what happened to Gabe or what happened to his family mm. oh yes heartbreaking. heartbreaking he had a wife and a baby girl and they had a grease fire in their apartment mm. building and took all of that away while yeah. he was playing at yeah. a local venue so sad I always cry at the scene when Gabe is talking to Hattie mm. and He's telling her that he hasn't played another note since then. Yeah. Her line, she says, you're going to see them again someday. But for now, you got to hand all that over to the Lord. And you got to keep singing. That's what you were born to do. And she says, you got to get to higher ground. Now that you actually point that part out about him or about Hattie encouraging um, Gabe to continue singing after such a devastating loss. I mean, the loss of your spouse and your child. I mean, that's mm -hmm. like the worst thing ever. Um, the fact that after he, you know, after losing everything again, um, like his home, his, you know, his toolbox, um, you know, he had to be, um, he had to relocate to Denver, and he was still singing. I mean, that was what, um, 2005. And then this was like 2017 ish, 2016. Yeah, 12 years this later. movie was like, you know, the setting of this movie. So that's what 11, 12 years. I yeah, mean, 12. 12 years of Gabe standing there and singing every <laughs> single Sunday. I mean, that wow. was also a shift in his mentality too, because I mean, he lost everything. He didn't, pick, he didn't want to pick up his guitar, but then um, after Hattie had given him that piece of encouragement and devastation hits and he's, you know, he remembers that she says, you know, you got to keep moving, you got to keep singing. And that's what he does every Sunday. And yeah. so that's, um, yeah, that's really inspiring. Yeah. This line from Oliver really breaks my heart too. When they're at Ramones for the second time, you know, Shane still hasn't mm -hmm. returned and they're talking about how they still haven't been able to find Hattie. He says, no man should have to wait forever for someone who's never going to come. Yeah. That's so sad. Don't give up hope. Don't give up, Oliver. Oh, man. And he's so bitter when he says it, too. And we'll talk about that scene with Oliver and Norman in a little bit. Yeah. Shane found Hattie. She spent three days trapped in the Superdome, then evacuated to Houston. Mm -hmm. And Shane also says that if it is her, she started over in Austin. Mm -hmm. This line from Shane, you know, when Oliver is in Washington, you know, he went after her, which we'll talk about a little mm -hmm. bit later. Yes. <laughs> she says, I hope she was worth waiting for. And Oliver says, so do I. There's so much subtext. Yes. So much subtext, like you're like, oh, this has a double meaning. <laughs> this also has a double meaning. <laughs> yeah, this movie is filled with great subtext. Yes, yes. Which we will talk about a lot. Oliver finds Hattie in Austin. I love this scene, you know, when he, he says, I hope you remember him because he certainly remembers you. And Hattie says, oh, my Lord, now are you telling me he's still alive? <laughs> Oh, the way she says that makes me cry. I know. Oh, it's, it's so sweet. And just, I mean, can you imagine somebody coming to you 12 years later and saying, hey, you know, that guy that you were friends or maybe more with, he's still alive. I mean, the shock. And then, I mean, because Oliver is Oliver and because of his foundation, he can do whatever the heck he yeah. wants. So he yeah. like, booked her a ticket yeah. to Denver yeah. and got her over 
over there yeah. so that they can reunite. Yes. Uh, we see that beautiful reunion when they, you know, look into each other's eyes, you know, after she starts singing and then they sing together, which is beautiful. Oh, I know. And when she just, she just, she can't help herself. She just jumps in there and she sings and he stops and he's like, I know that voice. I know that yes. voice. This oh. reunion always makes me cry. I'm like bawling every oh, time that, I watch oh, this. Yes. That reunion is that we're, it's such gold. Yes. The last thing we see of Gabe and Hattie is them on the Capitol steps. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, as Oliver is walking back to the DLO. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. And Maybe they were happily ever after. Yes. <laughs> At least Gabe and Hattie do. We don't yes. know about the rest of the postables, but we'll get to that soon. <laughs> Speaking of Oliver and Shane, do we want to get into their storyline as well? Uh, as yes. Joe yes. and the man that should all run, remain nameless. Oh, yes. We don't talk about Steve Merrick. (laughs) (laughs) The first thing I have to say is I love how Eleanor knew about Shane and Oliver's date. Oh, 100%. 100%. I I love how everybody just stops and looks. Looks. And he's like, and then he (laughs) tugs it into his (laughs) I mean, it, Mr. O'Toole is blurring personal life and work life. <laughs> I love the conversation between Shane and Oliver in the DLO. This is one of my favorites in this movie. When Oliver starts to walk away and then she says, I see that we're back to saying Ms. McInerney. And Oliver says, yes, well, I think it might be more important than ever to keep things professional at work. But come tomorrow night, I fully intend to call you Shane. Miss oh. McInerney. Oh, I've seen this movie like a thousand times. And when I was rewatching it today, I was Loon. in my kitchen making dinner and my phone was on the counter and he says that to her. And I'm just like, Swoon. you were just, you know, <laughs> throwing pizza sauce everywhere because I was making little um, Parmesan chicken rolls. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, <laughs> bless. <laughs> the smolder. Oh, such smolder. Oh, oh. And she's, Shane is eating it uh, up. Yes. No pun intended because we we're just talking about me making dinner in the kitchen while watching the scene, but yeah. she was eating it up and yeah. so was I. I mean, oh. Yes. And I didn't mention it in the recap of Lost Without You, but I do love that scene when he calls her Shane and she has to, you know, grab the table. Grab something. (laughs) That would probably be me. Yes. Oh my goodness. The way and the way he says her name is just like when he says Shane, it's very, I don't know, it's so swoony. I mean, who knew that just a man just saying a woman's name would be so swoony like that? But I guess guess we're we're used to him saying Miss McInerney. Yeah. Miss McInerney. Miss McInerney. All of a sudden he's like, Shane. (laughs) Yes. Gushing. Major gushing. Yes. Gush, gush, gush. Joe and Oliver having lunch. I love this scene too, you know, when they're at the garden mm-hmm. and joe realizes all the things that he wants to do mm-hmm. he wants to do with somebody oh yeah and oliver's all like oh well we could just sign you up for a book club, club at church, church. <laughs> or a seniors group yeah and all and joe's kind of like well first of all i'm not that old and second of all i kind of have some money in mind already yes and when he said, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little shook. I was like, well, Joe O'Toole, yeah, we can to. Yes. Okay. You're into butterfly ladies. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> the butterfly lady. <laughs> I love that though, that she's in charge of the butterfly garden. hmm Yeah. Yes. Kate. Kate. Yes. I also love the line from Joe when he's telling Oliver that he doesn't want him to feel awkward because he moves faster than him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awkward would that be if your parent came to you and him with this? they were like 
hey, um, I just wanted to talk to you. You're a slow mover, oh. but I'm not. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and date this girl that I'm interested in. You can figure out your, you know, this whole back and forth with you and um, Shane, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So funny. Shane not being able to find Eleanor's kombucha recipe, you know, her <laughs> multiple no's, the classic no, 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 no. Oh, yes. The classic no, no, no's. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. And then her and Oliver going back and forth on how to pronounce kombucha. Uh, her and Oliver going back and forth on how to pronounce kombucha. Yes, that is so funny. And then Shane's classic line, I need chocolate. <laughs> serious, serious chocolate. Yes. <laughs> Love it. I think every time there's a re-airing of higher ground, somebody tweets a gif of like chocolate when she says that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I mean, I feel you. I would need some chocolate after that exchange. Yeah. Too. Yes. She's so exasperated. She's like, whatever. whatever. <laughs> Oliver picking Shane up for their date. Another. Oh, okay. Did you notice? I didn't notice this the very first time I watched it, but um, a while back I was watching this movie and I noticed that as Oliver is going up to her front porch, he skips steps. Does he? I have not noticed that before. Oh, he, like he goes up one, one, like he skips every other step. Interesting. He's bounding up those steps because he's excited for his date. Yes. Long awaited date. I thought that was really cute. So cute. And he's like, oh, he, he's dusting off the swing. Off her, her swing and everything. Oh. If he had known what was coming later that night, he probably would not have dusted it off. Yeah, no kidding. Ugh. Just left it dirty. Yes, but we don't talk about that. We left <laughs> it dusty. Not yet. Can not we dirty. Talk about, yes. Can we talk about their dates? Yes. They're so cute in that E flat lounge. lounge. And they're just talking about blues and jazz. And he is so into her. Uh huh. I mean, those looks he, between them yes and I mean like we always knew that Shane had a, or Oliver had a thing for Shane you know even when he was not really he wouldn't when he wouldn't allow himself to have a thing for Shane mm -hmm. but this is the first time where we see him like actually like engage and yes in on her it's yes. like as though nobody else in this room exists mm -hmm. and he's like all about Shane yeah, it was so nice to see because in other scenes, I mean, they've always kept it really professional. They've kept it really mm -hmm. friendly. They they did go on the disastrous date at Montaldo's where he was so stinking oh. awkward. And, um, you know, just some of these back and forth between them. But this is the first time that we've actually seen him like zone in on yeah. just Shane and focus on just her. And he is, he's eating it up. Yeah, I mean, he is into it. I love this date. Mm -hmm. Although they didn't get to finish it, which we'll talk about in a minute. I wanted to mention, I heard this, I think Martha has mentioned it on a few interviews that the name of the E-flat lounge she got from her time in college. Yep. I think she was in a singing group or a choral group called yes. the E-flat. Yeah, that's awesome. like a fun, like a little fun um, Easter egg there. Yeah. So that's cute. The napkin drawing, we got to mention that. Mm -hmm. Oh, and yes. Her using her grandfather, or her using Oliver's grandfather's pen. Mm -hmm. Yep. And she's not giving it back. May I have my pen, please? No. Nope. <laughs> like, take my, take this yes. pen. <laughs> like, what are you going to do? Like, snuggle with it? Like, Oliver's pen smells like him <laughs> smells like his pocket I mean I'm sure it came in handy later but you know it's fine <laughs> oh goodness totally kidding <laughs> I love how he puts the napkin you know in his pocket yeah over his heart that was sweet his heart. <laughs> they walk out of the e-flat lounge and you know they're leaving and 
Shane is talking about, you know, how maybe God's trying to tell us something because, you know, things keep happening Mm -hmm. on their dates. Yes. They keep getting interrupted. (laughs) And Shane trips and almost falls, but she doesn't fall. Oliver catches her. And, you know, he asks if she's okay. After that, you know, he says, shall we call a cab? And she says, we could, but then I'd have to let go. (laughs) Every single time. Every single time. This, I am just, I am giggling like a schoolgirl. I am squealing. Like, I've seen this, like, this is the first time I've seen this. I don't know what it is. It's so swoony. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. Yes. It's such a mood with the rain and Uh just like the tension that's built up over the last how many movies and installments. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I am, I am here for it. The moment we've all been waiting for. Oh, oh, and, um, (laughs) quick little story. Um, so, um, I, my husband and I went to his, um, Christmas banquet of way back in (laughs) December and I, we were walking together and it was a little wet outside and I was wearing heels and I slipped and I grabbed him and he said, are you okay? And I looked at him and then I started laughing because I was going to say, uh, because he was like, you know, should I, you know, I think he asked me something and I said, no, because then I'd have to let go. <laughs> what did he, I can't remember what he asked me. Oh, he said, are you cute. Okay. And I think he said, do you want me to hold, like, I think on my purse or something, like, do you want me to hold that? Or like, do you, do you want to sit down? And I said, no, because he was like still holding me. Cause I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and then That's he, great. yeah. So then I said that line and then I started laughing and then he, oh. he was all like, what? And I said, it's a line from side <laughs> I love it. You're I the all it. over to my shade. <laughs> I love it. We did not find a staircase to kiss in though. <laughs> Let's just talk about that unseen kiss. That was really sweet. Okay, what were your thoughts about this kiss? First okay. time seeing it. When I first saw it, I was kind of upset that we didn't get to see it. But mm-hmm. then after maybe a day or two to think about it mm-hmm. and you know, reading some of Shondell's blog post on mm-hmm. Alameda and Downing, you know, I was like, okay, I can see why Martha did it this way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was very it's- sweet. Did you expect it? Did you expect the camera to pan up? Yeah, for a second I did. Yeah. The pan, like, because the definitely was like on them and then it just like panned down and you're like, wait, what? (laughs) It was still very romantic. I love it. I know. I mean, whoever knew that an unseen kiss would be that swoony. I mean, I was here for it. I'm like, you know what? I don't have to see them kiss. I can imagine it in my mind. (laughs) And if I heard correctly, I think that Martha took that it's like inspiration from an affair to remember yes which I have not seen that movie but I've not seen it either I saw a clip of it and there I did go back and watch the scene I found the scene on YouTube yeah yeah it's very iconic yes and they are on steps and that scene um too if you go to Chandel's blog she gives a lot of background behind that particular scene like it was not supposed to be filmed that way actually yeah, I remember it's reading to that. Be filmed like in some kind of like I think a garden or something. Or, yeah, I think I remember it was like supposed to be done behind a like a pillar. Uh, pillar, yeah. Or a column or something. But y'all can go to Chandel's blog and read all about that. Yeah, it's a great blog post. It's, I read yeah, it. It's a great little tidbit. Yeah. I loved their walk on the way back. That was really sweet. Although it got interrupted. Yes. The way Oliver's holding on to her hand. I know. I know. And they're like doing arms. It's like, yes. Oliver says, you know, what are you thinking about? And she says, I was thinking about how I almost quit the DLO. You did quit. More than twice. twice. (laughs) What was the third time? I don't think we ever heard that. Okay, so she quits in the pilot. Yep, she quits in the pilot, and then... Well, okay, well, I guess she doesn't really... Okay, she quits multiple times in the pilot, though. Twice. She... Because... Yeah. Be, I think that's what it is, because the first time she quits is she's like, I'm supposed to be in direct line operations, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. 
put so and then um she the who is it the andrea andrea right andrea andrea is like here fill this paperwork on so she quits that's quit number one quit yeah. number two is in that same movie when she is so frustrated and she's like you people are crazy and i quit that was quit number two okay and quit number three is when she quits the dlo in um um from paris with love because okay she yeah thought of holly holliver she was in the thought of Oliver. <laughs> so okay, yeah, times. that's good. Yeah, I think that's what they're referring to because she technically does quit. I um, didn't think about that first time when she filled out the form is quitting. Because, she, yeah, she requested a transfer, and in their mind, because I mean, Oliver is very much like, "This is a calling. You don't quit." Yeah, you know, that's true. You dedicate yeah. your life to all of this, and so for him, you know, yeah. For Shane, I didn't think about Asking that. Asking for a request of transfer, yeah. That's basically leaving. But I I guess the first time I watched it, I didn't think of it that way. I just, you know, thought she yeah. was just signing the form. But yeah, yeah, for sure. That makes sense. She goes on to say, but I didn't because, then Oliver says because, and then they're interrupted by the squeaky porch swing. Ah, insert song. We don't talk about Steve Merrick. <laughs> Steven Merrick or Steve. I don't know if. I, I just want a middle name, Steve. Steven, middle name Merrick. What incarnation are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, like, what are you doing here? <sighs> I love how Shane doesn't want to speak to Steve alone. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like, can we speak in private or something yes. along those lines? And she's like, no. I'm like, no way. <laughs> right. I'm not talking to you alone. Yeah. I mean, she shouldn't. Mm mm. Steve informs them that there is a crisis in DC and that she is needed immediately mm -hmm. for a mission involving USPS and hacking. <sighs> he says it's only a few weeks. A few weeks. Uh huh. That turned into three months. Mm hmm. What are your thoughts? Did you think that Steve was planning on keeping her that long like at first uh I don't know that I would have been surprised yeah I I mean I knew that he, I th I thought I'm trying to think back because it's been a few years since I watched this for the first time I want to say that I thought maybe he would try to convince her to stay or like yeah. kind of trick her a little bit or something um because they don't just bring steven just to like let her go again because he's the other man you know yeah um but yeah i i don't yeah yeah i think what i was trying to say is like when he first gets there did you think that he had like another agenda or it, was it just to oh yeah i totally or... thought he had another agenda like yeah I, yeah i did too right away yeah. i was like he's there for something and it's not just yeah absolutely well after you know they find out that she has to go on this mission oliver says you are the best at what you do miss mcinerney and then you know they go on to talk about how there can be no contact radio silence uh, no calls no texts no emails no regular mail which is sad yeah, I was kind of like, what kind of mission is this? Hmm. Yeah, I was wondering that too the first time yeah. I watched it. I also thought, Oliver, don't let her go. I know. <laughs> I, I was mean, like, what yes. are you doing? Yes, I understand. Like, you want to have her make that decision. You don't yeah. want to be the one to say, hey, you need to stay. And then she resents you because of something else, yeah. like, ulterior or whatever. But he could have at least said something along the lines of, like you know I'm gonna miss you I don't know something yeah. to make her to just yeah it was just so easy in letting her go and I know that we wouldn't have a story if he didn't but still I was like oh you gotta yeah. put it harder Oliver yes I love Shane's line you know when she says I really enjoyed our walk and Oliver said so did I I bet you all did I bet you all did <laughs> my favorite line from this scene though is 
when Shane is telling Oliver to tell Gabe about Hattie Mm -hmm. and she says he didn't have to say it she knew that he loved her Mm -hmm. yeah she didn't know love con or so much subtext subtext (laughs) more subtext except we don't give it an I love you for a very long time but it's fine it's fine (laughs) yes I noticed that Oliver never told Gabe so he knew that Shane Mm -hmm. was mainly talking about them yeah that's a good point good point Hmm. so shane goes inside and you know she goes to pack her bag and oliver says will she be safe steve says i die before i let anything happen to her (laughs) sure steve well that was just that one that was interesting because i was like dude you just should like if this was a poker game, you just showed your hand. Like we all now know that you have ulterior motives for keeping, uh-huh. like for for taking Shane. Like of yeah. all the millions of Americans, you pick Shane McInerney, your ex girlfriend, <sighs> and then you say that you'd die before you'd let something happen to her. Like I know that's supposed to be a comfort to all of us, but we also oh. know like why. <laughs> no. So, yeah. The last thing from that scene. I wrote in my notes is way to rub it in by sitting on the s- swings. Oh yes, and the squeaky porch swing at that. And then the, the and then he makes this yes the squeak. Ugh, so frustrating. Oh, the montage with Shane and Oliver, and then him taking care of her roses. That was sweet. Yes, it was very sweet. Well, the song has anybody seen my girl playing? Okay, that song is perfect for this. Yes. It's just so sad. He's so downtrodden and he's so alone and his hope just, you can see his hope just falling apart as the the days and the months go on. Like the DLO becomes messier and he's all, he's just beside himself. And I don't know if you noticed it, but there's a particular way they shot one of the scenes and they show oliver through the paris box yes i did notice that yeah it's like oh he's having ptsd from when holly left him i know i yeah i noticed that right away oh yeah a bomb went off near where shane and the team is working also how did they get chinese food yeah i was kind of like where are y'all at I mean, okay, well, hold on. If they're in a military base. And yeah, they probably have. Military base has order. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know, who knows where they were stationed, but they there are restaurants out yeah. there. Yeah, know. yeah, there is. Or there are, yeah. Yeah, depending on where they are located. Yeah. It's just strange. <laughs> Oliver moving Shane's desk don't do it Oliver oh when he moved her desk and then he stares at the blender yeah it's so sad like I said he's so forlorn and like when we get to the poker game especially he is just like he's 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 gone through the stages of grief he's just he's sad he's bargaining he's angry he's not he's like accepting it then he's like cycling back and just he's just so sad and I I just I hate seeing Oliver like that me too his conversation with Norman always makes me cry but there the acting in that scene is brilliant Mm -hmm. by Jeff and Eric yeah I love it and I love how um Norman calls him out Mm mm-hmm Norman is not the one to call somebody out like Norman is just you know go with the flow he's a little quirky he you know he'll he's brilliant but he's never the one to give relationship advice or anything like that and when he said you know basically the definition of insanity is the same thing over and over and over again like him waiting for his mom to come back and waiting for his wife to come back and waiting for Shane to come back and I'm just like oh my word (laughs) And I think um, I like how that prompted Oliver to actually do something about it. Because yeah. like, as a kid, it wasn't like he can 
take a road trip to see his mom like his mom yeah. left him and then holly now that was one thing he could have tried to go after her and he could have but like he yeah he didn't i mean not that anything would have been different no how come she still would have filed for divorce but at least oliver could have had that closure earlier and then rather than like sitting there pining away at his desk and now shane you know it's somebody else who's left him essentially and so like what's he gonna do about it is he gonna sit there and pine away or is he gonna fight for her and so yes um, yeah yeah his line when he says i don't know what to do that broke my i know and i wrote go after her in all caps yes. <laughs> go get her go get your girl oliver yes and he does indeed go after shane which i loved because that speaks volumes mm-hmm. yeah i loved his conversation with steve you know when they're having that back and forth like steve said you know i understand your situation and he's like no you don't yeah <laughs> no you don't <laughs> i want my employee back yeah but you know it's so i love how he's all like yeah she's not available and then she walks right out and I'm like yeah <laughs> you just got caught mm. I love how when Shane walks out Steve just kind of like throws his hands up in there. yeah he's like the jig is up yeah that's right the jig is up <sighs> he has a conversation with Shane I love when he tells her about playing poker that was mm-hmm. funny Oh, yes. And action. didn't they talk about action movie nights or action? Yeah. They watched some I action think so. movies. Action movies, yeah. I'm like, does Oliver watch action movies? <laughs> I would love to see that. Maybe in another movie, we could see married, married Shane and Oliver watching an action movie. Yeah, they're watching, they're like, you know, sitting back watching the Avengers. <laughs> hey, honey, what do you want to watch for TV tonight? Oh, the Avengers. You know what the Avengers are? Yeah, we watched it when you were away and I was very d- um, downtrodden and depressed about your absence in my life <laughs> it was a very dark time <laughs> we get copyright on that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> somebody's fan fiction <laughs> actually i would really like to know what, what action movies they watched yes what i would, would too. Be, what would postables what would be an action movie that oliver would watch during his state of depression <laughs> I don't know. I'd love to find out. Spider Man, Batman Returns, those yeah. are classics, you know. Dark of dark, the, not Dark of Night, The Dark Knight. <laughs> yeah, I would love to know. <laughs> yes. Oliver asking for his pin back. Ouch. Uh, that hurt. Yeah. That like was like a like... stab in the heart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he's like, I'd like my pin back. And she's like, okay. And oh, that scene, that scene, that scene. It's just- Their acting is incredible. It It is. And it's so sad because Shane doesn't get it. No. Shane is so clueless. She's thinking like, she's like, no, I have to do my job. This, you know, I'm dedicated to my job. And I can understand that. Like in her mind, she's thinking like, Oliver should understand this. Like he's dedicated to his work. Why can't I be dedicated to my work? Yeah. When in fact, it's not about that. It's about the yeah. fact that like, she's literally been gone and she's not tried to contact him and he suffers from ptsd from when his wife left him the Mm -hmm. first like you know and so it's just oh there's so (sighs) many things unsaid these next few lines are really heart-wrenching he says why would a man who obviously cares so much about you let you go if he didn't have to I ask myself that all the time. And then, you know, Oliver goes on to say, I made that part up about the highly placed official. Shane says, I know it was a pretty good bluff though. (laughs) I learned it playing poker, but I can't lie to you. I know. I'm just wondering if Steve can. I know. Oh, he calls her out. He calls her out, but there was, it was much needed. Yes. You know, oh. The conversation with Steve said this is the last time we see Steve. For now. <laughs> I'm just putting that out into the universe for like future SSD movies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. 
Uh, this line from Steve really gets my goat. He says, what kind of guy flies all the way down here and leaves without getting what he came for? And Shane says, the kind of man that lets me make up my own mind. But I can't do that unless I have all the facts. Right. Steve lied to Shane. He did. We all knew that it was coming. But like, uh, to hold somebody against their own will and not give them the, all the, oh, that's just, that is not okay. That is not okay. This line. Okay. This line really irks me. He says, do you really think that delivering old letters is as important as some of the world changing stuff that we do here every day? Are you really telling me you want to throw all that away for a squeaky porch swing in Denver? Um, oh, yes. no, you didn't. Oh. Yes, she is. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> you did not just go there. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that was so rude. I mean, like. And Shane's face is just like, how dare you? <sighs> mm -mm. I love that last scene with Joe and Oliver. That was really sweet. It was brief, but it was mm -hmm. sweet. Yeah. We finally get to the scene that everyone has been waiting for. The DLO scene. Oh, the so iconic fun. DLO scene. Oh my goodness. I mean, are there words? There are no words. No, I just have a few points before we get to the, the big part of the mm -hmm. scene. You know, Oliver walks in, he sees Shane's desk after he gets his yoo-hoo. Mm -hmm. He sees her coat hanging up and, you know, she turns around in the chair or his chair and she's talking about the kombucha recipes. Mm -hmm. She's asking about her roses. Oliver says that he had to cut them back. You have to do that if you want them to bloom to their full potential. Again, with the subtext. Yeah. <laughs> so much. So much in this movie. Talking about Steve. Oliver says, I have quite a few very sincere things to say about Steve. Mm -hmm. and Shane says, you were right about him. He's not a bad guy, but he's competitive um competitive okay that's I wouldn't say just competitive it. do what I said I wouldn't say just competitive oh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> trying to steal Oliver's girl away from him right you no know, he's just a thief not even competitive he's just straight up thief <laughs> she says and tell me again why you moved my desk it was hard to look at every day. Yeah. Oh, I, I really enjoy the fact that Shane really had to like pull it out. And I also love the fact that only she, like, she knows what he's talking about. Yes. She just needs him to, to verbalize say. it. And just be straight up with her and just yes. say it. Yes. She says, so you mean you missed me. Then we get that classic line from Oliver. I mean what I say when I say it. Although I don't always say what I mean when I do say it. I mean it. Then, you know, he goes on to talk about their first date and how they have never finished a first date because they keep getting interrupted yes. by <laughs> somebody, <laughs> something. <laughs> But then he goes on to say, but given your extended absence, you might understand my assumption that your intentions and mine were not in concert. Oh, Shane. ouch. <laughs> Ooh. Shane, oh. Shane's line. She says, if you were suggesting that I didn't miss you, and I might be the only person on earth who understands what you just said. Oh. This one I wrote on the plane. <laughs> this one I wrote. It's like, wow. She knows him. Oh, but she died. Oh, she dies. She knows him so well. Mm -hmm. I mean, now I would, I would love to just, maybe I'll just leave it in my imagination. Cause like in my imagination, it's perfect, but it would have been really fun to see just like an extra 
scene of like Shane just sitting on the plane writing those letters or yes I would have seen that um I mean it it, I understand why they didn't do it because that was not the focus and of course we're limited on time but just seeing it from Shane's point of view because this the series is very Oliver centric like it's from Mm -hmm. Oliver's point of view um this movie is from Oliver's point of view so just to see Shane's point of view in some of these scenes would be I I would enjoy it yeah I would too and I mean even the series starts out with a monologue from Oliver yeah Yeah. like the very first thing we hear in the pilot is him talking yeah yeah but yeah but the letters oh let's just talk about those letters I have it written down okay this always makes me cry. You know, when she's reading off all the letters, she says, I wrote this one on the plane with your pen and talked about kissing you on the steps. And the second one I wrote with your pen after we landed and told you that I wish I'd never left. The third one is about how afraid I am that I can't do what they need me to do. And the fourth one is about how I'm afraid I'm going to die before I can see you again. And the fifth one is about deciding to survive it all so that I can come back to this crazy, crazy stupid, stupid place. place. <laughs> and the spin kiss. And then you move my desk and whoosh. <laughs> the letters go flying. The faces go together. It's like all the things. That kiss. Or that, that kiss was so sweet. That kiss, though. I mean, Hello. Swearing worthy. That kiss is so iconic. I have, besides future ones that come up in a future movie towards the end, <clears throat> um, this kiss is probably one of my favorite rom com kisses that I've seen, yeah. like ever. Yes. I think it's because the tension has built up you know the letters go flying and he spins her it's not just like a it's like full of passion and fury yes he (laughs) took his time with that kiss oh he sure did he He followed his dad's advice he sure did yeah I that was woo woo I'm gonna get a little hot in here (laughs) man I loved it though it was really sweet that's one of my favorites I love it. I love it. I love that scene. I mean, it's so well done. Yes. The acting, everything. They're just, they're incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You really believe that they are Shane and Oliver. I mm-hmm. mean, like I do. I'm like, Shane and Oliver. Like, I totally forget that these are not like real people in this moment. <laughs> I'm just like, huh? Ah! <laughs> they do a phenomenal job in these they roles. Do. I, I can't imagine anyone else playing mm, yeah. Shane and Oliver. Yes. The napkin. Mm, <laughs> yes. Goes on to the napkin. Oliver goes on to tell Shane about his dad and how he broke up with Kate. Mm-hmm. And yes. that Norman and Rita are engaged. He kneels down to pick up the letters for yes. Shane. <laughs> or help her pick up the letters. Yes oh yeah I was like oh is he gonna propose (laughs) the first time I watched this I thought that was gonna be a proposal wow that's fast but I was like y'all didn't even finish your first date and then he's you know helping her and everything I'm like oh 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 man okay okay (laughs) yeah that's what I thought the first time I watched this I was like proposal already yeah yeah Oliver handing Shane one of his letter openers, you know, when they're talking about reading the letters, Mm -hmm. he says that could take all night. But it could take all night. Yep. Oliver with the Yoohoo and Shane Mm -hmm. reading one of the letters. I love how he just pours the Yoohoo into the (laughs) Yes. Oh, it's such a sweet way to end. And then she reads him the letters and they live happily ever after. (laughs) Yes. I love the first part of that letter that she reads. Mm -hmm. Dear Oliver, when we left it off and flew into the clouds, I realized that you have made a believer out of me. It was no mistake that I was transferred to the dead letter office instead of direct line operations. 
We could not have begun dancing together so long ago without learning the steps we needed to find our way back to each other. So sweet. Do we want to briefly get into Rita and Norman before we start to wrap up? Yeah, yeah. They, um, I mean, their storyline is a little, you know, kind of minimal in this. Yeah. But it's a big one for them, despite them not having very many scenes. I mean. It's a big movie for them. It is a big movie for them. I mean, Norman, Norman has a lot of growth that he goes through, like, throughout yeah. this. And, like, this is, like, this is his moment. Yes. He really shines. Yes. There were some very comical moments, too, with mm-hmm. them as well. The first one that I really loved, it was really brief, but he was talking about his cousin, Vernon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and playing the spoons, which that comes up later mm-hmm. on. Yes. One of the next movies. Norman and Rita wanting to keep the potato. That was yes. funny. Charlene the potato. Yeah. Oh, this one always cracks me up when Norman is talking about how he got his name in the newspaper. Oh, yes. Yes, and it was just an accident or misunderstanding. Yeah. yeah I was a unknown man. <laughs> and the charges were dropped. Oliver says, you were arrested? It was just a misunderstanding at the zoo. I was actually trying to return the penguin. Wait, I remember that story. That was you? Yeah. <laughs> man cleared and runaway penguin escapade. I was the unidentified man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so fun. Again, every time this movie is re-aired, I try to tweet like a gif of Penguin. <laughs> yes, yes. When oh, he says that line. So funny. Oh, classic Norman. Classic Norman. Oh, the scene with them at the mailbox grill with Ramon and Joe when Rita's like, poker? I love poker. Oh, yes. Who knew that Rita loved was like, poker? What? <laughs> poker I love poker her voice it's all like deep and guttural it's so great did you notice Norman's facial expression yes excuse me he was like whoa he's like huh I've known you for how long and this is just now coming out (laughs) it was very brief but I love the two clips that we got of them it was in a montage Mm-hmm. of them at the garden they were watching the potato oh grow. yeah that was really sweet yes they're just so cute yeah they are they are really sweet and then can we talk about the big moments for them yes i was just about to get yeah, to that the, oh, proposal yeah and, and oliver and ramon are all like oh there. we're cheering our little buddy on yeah. <laughs> I, I love how Oliver's outside making sure everything's okay. He's such a good friend and like yes. he's a great like big brother figure to Norman. And I loved his reaction. That was really sweet. So sweet. And I love how um Rita's all like, oh, you know, you ready to go? And Norman's like, he's he's gonna do it. And then he gets so nervous and then yeah. he proposes. And yes, he's he gets so emotional because like this I know. is somebody who loves him for who he is and um like his past doesn't matter he's just he's Norman he's just he's Norman and just have Norman having his the background that he does being rejected as a child you know not having parents bouncing from foster home to foster home until he found his forever home when he was you know a um like still an adult older adolescent I believe and him being able to find someone that will truly accept him and yes. like who loves him fully because I don't know that he's ever experienced that mm-hmm. like a full love of a from yeah. someone and so I I just I love that and they get so excited and they're I so giddy he spins her around yes oh that one line from the proposal when he says, I don't think that I'll make you as happy as you make me. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to try every day for the rest of my life. My <gasps> this proposal always makes me cry. Oh, this proposal is so sweet. I love it so much. I love how Rita's middle name is Moon River. Yes. <laughs> I just had to mention that. Yeah. That awesome. Yeah. 
and I, I love how it's just so innocent and they're so their love is just so pure and mm-hmm. I I'm I'm so here for it I, I yes. love it I love this proposal Yes. And more and it's one of those things where like you know because Shane and Oliver really drive the series yeah so, you know I feel like most times we don't always appreciate Norman and Rita until like you're watching it again and again and again and for me the more I watch this movie the more I just I just love Norman and Rita's relationship and I appreciate I it I love their proposal and oh my heart yeah I love both couples, both really amazing couples. I just have to mention before we get into our last two segments, their line, you know, when they say, we're getting married to each other. (laughs) Who else would you be getting married to? (laughs) But that's what I mean. They're so cute and they're so innocent. Yes. They're like, yay! (laughs) Yes. That's really cute. I also... I'm jumping ahead a little bit. So spoiler alert for any new postables that have not seen To the Altar yet. Do you notice how in both Norman and Rita's proposal kiss and Shane and Oliver's proposal kiss? Yes. Rita pulls Norman in and Shane pulls Oliver in. Yes, I did notice that. I did, I did. Ah, it's so sweet. I love that. Love it, love it. Do we want to get into the lessons learned? Let's go for it. Uh, Let's see. What was your first one that you have written down? Um, One of the lessons learned is never leave something unsaid. Yes, that's a great one. I think that goes for, um, obviously, that goes for Gabe and Hattie. Mm -hmm. That goes for Shane and Oliver. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and then for like Norman, Norman. Norman had a hidden like he hid his feelings for well he didn't really mm-hmm. hide it that well but like he kept his feelings for Rita suppressed and it was like through the series that he like really opened up and this was mm-hmm. his time where he did share and he did yeah. you know he shot his shot yeah. he proposed to the woman he loves yeah so um yeah that's definitely a lesson from this movie yeah life is not about what you do for a living it's about the living you do mm-hmm. yes Love is about noticing the little things. In this instance, the wins are not. Yeah. Yeah. Which was cute. We didn't mention that Super in the cute. segment, but mm-hmm. I love that. True love never gives up. Missing someone is your heart's way of reminding you that you love them. Mm-hmm. Some people just don't know what they have. Yeah. Always say what you mean. So that basically goes off of what you had said a yes. few minutes ago. You may not have control, but you always have a choice Mm -hmm. and hand it over. Yeah. Hand it over. (laughs) Hand it over. Love it. We have some trivia for the postables to wrap up the episode. All righty. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? I can go first. Yes. All righty. First question is when was Hurricane Katrina? 2005 or August 2005. Yes, August 23 to 31, 2005. (laughs) Other than Colorado, what was one place mentioned that the next bus could be headed to right after Hurricane Katrina? Houston. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) Good job. I do remember that one. (laughs) I didn't even have to read the choices. You got it right away. All right. What are the three Ps for Ramon? Passion, Pathole and poker yes good job (laughs) what did Rita say was the population of Denver 690,000 800,000 760,000 or 725,000 C yes okay good (laughs) good job yay (laughs) all righty what was Norman's card hand when he folded during the poker game? Oh, gosh. I wasn't even paying attention. Uh, like all three. You want me to say all three? Well, or there just- are actually five cards. Oh, gosh. Uh, I have no idea. So it was a royal flush. He had flush. a jack, a queen, a king, and an ace. 
That's right. Yes. A royal flush. How many people were evacuated from Louisiana to Colorado after Hurricane Katrina? Oh, 195,000 people? 10,000, 6,000, 4,000, or 12,000? 12,000? Nah. 10,000? Nah. 6,000? Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know where 195 came from. That's like a lot of people. <laughs> all righty uh my last question that i have here is what color was oliver's tie in the scene when shane returns is it blue it is navy oh navy. has a white diagonal stripes that's right yes <laughs> What was the address of Hattie's Backstreet Blues before Hurricane Katrina? 45 St. James Street, 24 Bourbon Street, 78 St. Charles Avenue, or 50 Julia Street? Is it the St. Charles one? It is a saint, but not that one. Is it the first one? Yes, the 45 St. James Street. (laughs) I actually looked up streets in Oh, did you? (laughs) That makes I don't sense. know if the numbers are right, but yeah. the street. That's funny. Awesome. My last question is, what color is the letter opener Oliver handed to Shane? Gold, copper, silver, or bronze? Oh, silver? Nope. Copper? Nope. Bronze? Nope. Gold? <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I didn't even know he had gold ones. Huh, that's interesting. I have to pay better attention on my next rewatch. (laughs) This was fun. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. This was a lot of fun. Thank you for joining us, Casey. Uh, Thanks for having me. I love talking about Higher Ground. It's it's always a great movie. Love it. Yes, (laughs) it is. We'll have to have you back on sometime. Yeah, definitely. Um, Keep me in mind as long as my schedule allows. Yes, definitely. Definitely. All right, Postables. Well, that wraps up our recap of Higher Ground. We will be back next week to recap Home Again. Oh, yeah. Home Again. That's another good one. Another great one, yeah. Till the cows come home. (laughs) Yes. Thank you so much for listening, and we hope you have a great day or night wherever you are in the world, and we will see you in our next episode. We love y'all. Bye. Bye.